Hi everyone, this is Laura Hammock from the Marble Jar channel. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you all of the products and the steps that I used to create a sink with running water for my minivan camper. So recently I converted my minivan into a camper that sleeps too. I have a three-part video series that describes that conversion. I didn't have quite enough time in those videos to give all the specifics on how I put together the sink with running water, so I thought I'd do a separate video on that. Because the bed occupies so much space in a minivan that sleeps too, my kitchen only uses a little less than two feet in the back of the van, plus some of the great outdoors. When I'm cooking, I keep my cooler, cabinets, and stove outside the van, and I use the back part of the van for counter space and access storage. The sink hangs off the van and pumps water from a storage container that is stored underneath the bed. First, let's talk about the sink. So I knew I wanted the sink to stick out from the back of the van so that I could drain the water directly onto the ground. So this is the sink that I bought. It collapses and pops up for use and it has a nice drain in the bottom that you can seal and use just as a basin. The question was how to secure it without a big built-in solution that wasn't easy to store. After about two hours of wandering around my local Home Depot and thinking about and rejecting dozens of ideas, I found these curved metal tubes in the shelving section. I'm gonna to try to provide links to all these products in the description if I can find them. My third row seats are folded and stored in the trunk of the van, so I can shove these tubes down into the crevice and the stored seats make it tight enough to hold them in place. Because they have a tendency to shift from side to side, I cut a piece of plywood to fit into the right side of the van and I drilled two holes in it to use as a spacer. Okay, so that works well. Now I needed to extend these tubes to give something for the sink to hang on to. I tried a bunch of things, but I ended up finding half inch PVC pipes that were pre-cut to 24 inches long and fit nicely onto the ends of these curved pieces. Because they fit a little bit loosely, I wrapped a piece of electrical tape around the ends of the curved pieces to make it fit a little bit tighter. Then I ordered some half inch plugs to cap off the end of each pipe. Okay, so now I had two sides of the frame for my sink. For the other two sides, I ended up using two pieces of nylon rope just tied in a loop. First, I put one loop onto the pipes, then I slide the sink onto the frame, and finally secure with a second rope loop. The sink is fairly secure on this frame, but for even more stability, one corner of the sink rests on the rear ledge of the van. The other thing is the whole sink folds down into almost nothing and stores easily in my three drawer cabinet. Okay. Now I wanted a solution that didn't require me to lug out my water storage every single time I wanted to wash my hands or rinse off a piece of fruit. So let's talk about the water pump faucet. So I learned a ton from YouTuber Todd Parker. A link to his channel is in the description. I watched his video where he tested out four faucets so that I could choose the right product for my needs. I also watched and rewatched the portion of his car camping kitchen box video that discussed his faucet to figure out how he got his to work. As a result, my design is largely based on his with some additional tweaks. First of all, I bought this water pump faucet. It is designed to be used on top of a water cooler jug to pump water up from the jug and into a cup. In order to make it work for my purposes, it needed some modifications. First, I have a four gallon water storage container that fits underneath the bed platform. I didn't want to bring out that container every time I needed water, so I wanted the pump to be separate from the container and pump water over a longer distance. Second, the original product was meant to stand on top of water jug, but I wanted the pump faucet to be able to stand on its own. And third, I needed a way to raise up the pump so that it could act as a faucet for my sink. Plus, it needed to be higher since it works better when the water is at a lower level than the pump. So first, separating the pump from the water jug. First of all, the tube that comes with the pump is not good quality and is too short. So I bought this length of food grade tubing. Again, many of these products are directly from Todd Parker's solution. This gave me enough tube to separate the pump from the water source. But as he points out, the tubing is a little sticky and prone to pick up dirt and lint and debris. So I followed his lead and I bought this braided tube covering. Then in order to access the water source under my 12 inch bed platform, I bought two L joints. I drilled a hole in the cap to the water storage container and it was just big enough to shove this L connector into. Now, you wouldn't want to turn the container upside down, but short of that, it's really not going to leak if it's sitting right side up. I cut another length of tube that extended into the bottom of the water container, and then I determined how far away I wanted to operate the pump. For me, that was about six feet, and I cut my tubing to that length. Next, I fed the braided covering over the tubing, or really the tubing through the braiding, I will warn you that this process was frustrating and it took some time. 
Once I had the tubing covered, it was time to connect the tube to the L connector. The braided covering comes with two heat shrink tubes that serve to seal the ends. I used a lighter to provide the heat to shrink that tube sealing, sealing it onto the L connector. Okay, one end finished. Then I did the same thing for the water pump end by heating up the sleeve to seal that connection to another L connector. Then I cut a small piece of tubing to attach that connector to the water pump. Okay, so that was all fine, but I needed to figure out a way to have this stand alone. Right now there's a bunch of stuff sticking out of the butt of the end of this pump, but I wanted to be able to set it down independently on a counter or a table. So I needed to enclose it. I'm not gonna tell you how many things I tried out for this purpose, but it was a lot. <laughs> In the end, the best fit was this top to an aerosol paint can. It was still a little loose, so I applied some layers of tape to the inside of the top until the fit was snug enough to stay put. Then I drilled a hole in the side, fed the tube and L connector through it and attached it to the pump. And voila, now it can stand on its own. The last thing I needed was some kind of a pedestal so that the pump would, pump would be in a right position to be a faucet for the sink. As it was, it was too low and too unstable. Again, I tried magnets, Velcro, and some other things, but what is working for, for me right now is this small plastic trash can that I got from Dollar Tree. It was easy to cut with scissors to fit exactly over the bumps and irregularities of the back of my van. In addition, I could cut out a little hole on the top that the pump would just sit into and a channel in the back to accommodate the tubing. Now it sits above the sink, it's fairly stable, and when I put everything away, it doubles as a storage container for the, fun, the faucet pump and cord. So this works great. Let me show you. I like using it with my sink so that I can wash dishes and vegetables with two hands. I also like to use it even when we haven't set up the sink to rinse off things, brush our teeth, and fill up water bottles. Let me know what you think. Comments are always appreciated, and thanks for watching.